emotions. Hey, 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 sister friends. Welcome to the first season of We On The Table. I am Tanya Burke, your host. And today's episode, we have Gwen Rogers. She is one of the most dynamic leaders of the 21st century. She's a wife, she's a mother, she's just doing it all. She is killing the game. Today, Gwen is here to talk about her leadership as the president on the San Bernardino City Unified School District and her upcoming election. So let's take a look. Hey, everybody, we are here for another episode of We Own the Table, and we have our sister friend, Gwen Rogers, here today. And I'm telling you, as, I, as you heard, you heard her story before we brought her on. This woman is dynamic. This woman has been doing some wonderful things in the Inland Empire. And I'm telling you, she's in the Inland Empire. She's serving in the Inland Empire, but we know how we do it as sister friends. Our reach goes way beyond where we are and her reach has gone way beyond the work that she has done in her community and beyond, I can't tell you. So it is an honor and a privilege to have you here today, Gwen, sister friend, Gwen, to have her here. Um, on We Own the Table because she owns the table as well. And she is here today to talk about her serving in office. You know, Gwen, uh, right now, Gwen, you are, are you the president? I am. I am the San Bernardino City Unified School District Board President. Yes. Oh, oh, hold on a minute now. Okay, wait a minute. We got to stop right there because <laughs> Sister friend said she's the president. Come on, we yeah. gotta we gotta give some. We got. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we gonna we gonna recognize and we gonna celebrate that. Yes, yes. I am so proud of you, Gwen. Thank you. Um, you all don't know. I met Gwen before she was in office. Tell I met Gwen with another sister friend, Kim yes. Carter, yes. who's out there uh, doing it. I'm gonna have Kim on a future show, but mm -hmm. Kim is out there killing the game. And she was like, Tanya, I need you to come in. We're gonna go do this tour. It's the sister that you got to meet. Her name is Gwen, and she is this and that. And I was like, Yeah, let me meet her. I want to meet her because at the time I was serving on city council. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Yes, and I you were. not too long. Got into my seat. I had one. My seat and had just started serving. So she was like, this sister named Gwen. So when I met Gwen, I was like, she wasn't lying. <laughs> this girl is really trying to do some things around here. Absolutely. And been in office, I've been, you know how people are saying, uh, ear hustling and sitting in the bushes looking. <laughs> you know, like, what's she over there doing now? <laughs> You know, don't be at the store. No, I was watching you too, though. You know, don't let's not underestimate that. After I was like, okay, I see, I have somebody I can watch from a distance as well. So you was doing the thing too. Yeah, I was, I appreciate you for that. Thank you so yeah. much. You know, because it's so important as mm -hmm. black women. You know, yeah. we always get the stigma. We get the stigma that we angry. Right. We get the stigma that it's the stigma that you know we don't get along. All the stigma. And, the stigma. And you, you, you got that right. And that's not true. You know, um, it's so important that we celebrate one another. And Absolutely. I'm so proud of you and the work that you have Thank done. You, Thank you, you have been a model uh, for all women, 
not just black women, for yes. all women, yes. young and old. Okay, now I'm right. gonna say, let me let me take that old part. Yeah, we're gonna back. take that old. Yeah. Yeah. Season. season. I like that. I like that. Yeah, like it's hard. Large season, not not that. Other and you know stuff. we can't cook nothing without it. Yeah, not that Mrs. Dash. No, but, no, but no. large. <laughs> It's real. And I love that you said that too about working together. And that's that's just been my motto. You know, I have Young Women's Empowerment Foundation. That was a vision 15 years ago. I really didn't understand the vision, but I said, I need to work with these young girls because I started seeing things that I'm like, why don't you guys get along? And people know me. I was raised in an all boy family. So, you know, me and my mom was holding it down. But I had it was all male dominant. I have only brothers, and I'm the youngest. But we ain't gonna talk about that. We was up at the end the youngest. But I was like, I want to get along. Like these are sisters I never had, and that's the dream that I began to work towards. My vision was let's work together, and I realized how powerful that is. Let's embrace each other, girl. If your hair is on fleek, I'm gonna tell you. I yeah. like your hair. What did you do? What did you buy? What did you? That's what we have to do. But when we don't do that, yeah, we get those other labels. You know, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. So what exactly have you been? So you said you started this Girl, movement 15 man. years ago. 15 Y'all hear years. that? 15 years yes. ago. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it is still going strong. Still going. Still going. Okay. And the beautiful thing about it is like, so 15 years ago, me starting out saying, how can I give back? How can I support young women that maybe things are not going how they want it to go, but they have a desire to just do. And so there came Young Women's Empowerment Foundation. Me and another friend said, let's start at home. Because you know you know the word, charity starts at home. So we said, let's begin working at home. I didn't know how to get in. I was in corporate America, but willing. Went to my corporation and said, well, y'all just at least sponsor me to go do this. Because they were like, I was in finance for over 20 years. And they're like, okay, you always coming up with something. So I went and I said, I just want to volunteer. I picked a school in San Bernardino, started volunteering, connected with some of the staff over there and said, I just want to give back. It went from supporting a book club to a foundation that's now in like 14 schools. And wow. if you for it, people say, and it's called Young Women's Empowerment Foundation, working with the social emotional long before it became popular, to mm-hmm. say, girl, you got barriers, we are gonna help you get through those barriers so you could be successful. And the beautiful thing that I didn't realize as I designed the board and brought the workers together, I don't know. I sit back as a president now, but the young ladies that run the program, all single mothers giving back, just doing the work. And I was like, I don't even see that ministry within the ministry. And they're just empowering young girls. We got girls all across the nation going to school, college, careers. We support them, give them scholarships. And it's just, you know, it's just a wonderful thing to have young women to say, we're there for you. What do you need? We are supposed to mold you and build you. So that's what I do. And then I empower women, you know, with the wellness side. I'm like, hey, we can't be stressed out. We gotta take care of ourselves. Knock it off. Take some time. <laughs> Girl, I can't tell you. Uh- and, you know, I'm not gonna point the finger, but, you know, I, uh, I have so- Right. I had the same issues, not taking care of myself. Of you. You know, uh, almost to the point of stroking out, you know, and high blood pressure and all of that. So you're right. It's so important that we take care of ourselves. You know, my youngest daughter always said, you cannot, you can't be of service if you're out of service. You Now, you know, that's important that you have you have bridged the gap you you you're working with our our young folks and yep. then here it is you working with the older women yes. and saying hey y'all gotta take care of yourselves too and, and and one of the things you brought up that uh kind of hit me when you talked about the ministry yes oftentimes we associate ministry just in church in church right you know and right. And and especially now with the, the days of COVID and we having to isolate and many people are, you know, the churches are closed. A lot of the churches are closed. Mm-hmm. And so 
taken that because it was all it's always been God's will for us to take beyond the four walls. Right, you're gonna start, you're gonna start something in here. It has always been. I will tell you, because you know I'm in ministry as well. My first mm -hmm. recorded sermon was preaching to the empty pew. Now what? Okay. Because yeah. they always have had empty seats and we Shut didn't go to occupy yeah. them. So what happened? Why did we why is it now a bigger deal? Look, let me tell you something. See, okay, y'all. Now we didn't we we didn't went we didn't went we didn't went there on you. We didn't went there on you. So those of you who know. Y'all know the church house. You gonna get up, you gonna walk around here, make sure you put your church finger up. Make sure you show respect. Make sure you show respect and put your your, your church finger up if you're gonna be leaving leaving the broadcast. But you are so right. And that was a prophetic word yes. given way back, you know, then Man. to talk yep. about to really prepare us for what's going on. Right. And so I'm so glad that you were able, one, you were obedient yes. in your calling and right. obedient in the word that was planted inside of you for you yes. to understand and know that I got to take this, I have to take this ministry out, right. out of the community, you know. Out, not in the internal, just out yeah. you worried about the ones that's already in there, they getting what they need. But yeah. there's been people out there all along in need. Now it's like, Oh my goodness, how do we reach them? Well, hedges and highways is what I read. We spoke. <laughs> Girl, shut your lip. You're going to have me have a moment up in here. <laughs> That's what I read. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's, it's great that you have made that connection. And, yeah. and then it didn't stop there. No, it didn't stop there. So when did you first run? For wow, so it was crazy. It, I was appointed to the board and I was literally in this whirlwind coming out of corporate, making sure I was there for my kids. My first born getting ready to go to, of all places, Morehouse College. I'm like, you leaving me? I'm trying to wrap my mind around this, but I have been a parent advocate working with my kids, working with other parents. And then community, the community came to me and said, well, have you ever thought about running? I said, I haven't ran from anything but from a dog. I don't, I don't, I don't run. What do you mean? They said, I said, politician? Oh, no, no. Who is that? Hey, let me stop you right there. I can't relate. I can't relate because Never. the biggest issue I had when I was, I, I ran from the thought of running. When people kind of put it out there, yes. I was like, child, I ain't no politician. Do you see these people on TV? Like, I ain't nothing like that. You know, in my mouth, this is who I am. Y'all, who are you ready for that? Right. And so I understand, and, it, and that's a great point that you brought up because it's so important right. for, for those who are out there who want mm -hmm. to serve and especially in politics, Absolutely. what they have to understand that you don't have to have a certain role. Like you don't have to be this certain person no. get caught up in that stereotype of what a politician right. is. And these days of what we seeing on the TV, we oh need the exact opposite. Absolutely. <laughs> if you're going to be successful for real, for real, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just said, no. I said, all I know how to do is be me. And I yeah. prayed about that. And I said, Lord, if this is your will, I don't want to change who I am because I tell people even still to this day, my motto is <laughs> I'm more afraid of God than anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're not going to get me in here doing something I'm not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I have been able to engage with the community, be who I am. And so when I came forward as an appointment, I was in the midst of flying my son and coming back. And they, a person was leaving the board. And I just went before the board. I think it was 11 people. And I just shared, this is who I am and what I would like to do and what I am doing. And that part is important too. I tell people all the time, you don't go in and start to do. You should have already been doing it. Not just, okay, now this is what I'm going to do. Because it's, like I said, that's why I call it ministry. It's something that you already do. It just, you just bring it to a different platform for the voices of all those people that you represent. So, And that's a great point because 
like you said, you had already been out there doing the work. Yes. It wasn't you didn't the, the position didn't make you, you made the position. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that's how people were able to see she's the right one for this job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's the right one to serve in this position right. because they see they had already saw the work that you were Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I truly believe that that's the most important part. And even in running, you know, now for the first time on you know running off of a first term and i said it's not about getting ready you know it's what now you talk about what you've already done and doing and not again starting all over again and i'm like to me it makes sense but i know sometimes you know we've seen some stranger things in, pol in politics you know people promising and saying things but i'm like you know if you're doing it and that's what you call to do you don't have to explain it. Just say, look, just look to it. Just point to it. Like we said with church finger, just, just point to it. And that's the work. My work remains the same as consistent is parent engaging those parents, making sure they're involved, holding people accountable, making sure we're supporting those that will make education its best. Mm -hmm. and that's our job. And and if you're not doing that, then yeah, we do have to come in like the church usher and say, you know, we got to talk about it. How can mm -hmm. we put you in the right queue, you know, so that you don't get distracted and know that we're here for kids and we're here to make sure that their future is bright. And that's, that's great that you say that. And especially talking about the parents and the parent engagement, that is so important. You know, I have worked in school systems and mm -hmm. I have been, you know, I've been a counselor and it has hurt my heart uh, yeah. to see you know, when you don't have that parent engagement, right. when you don't have the parents involved, and especially in those communities that need it the most. Absolutely. You know, and so that is great that you have extended efforts, right. you know, in your time serving on the, on the uh, school board and making mm -hmm. sure that yes. parents are, are, are reached. You yeah. know, and you were doing it beforehand. You were doing working it before. You were working with the and it's the trust factor. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, we we know that there's trust and we're constantly building that trust. But I'll never uh, stray away from that platform of making sure parents want to be involved. I truly believe that. And I'm doing research on that now. But you have to engage them. You know, you have to invite them like, hey, you know, it's OK to do because there's been so many broken relationships and things have not always been good in education for many. And yeah. so when they have children, it doesn't change. They still feel the same way. And we have to capture those moments and hear their voice. And everyone who knows me know that's big. I am going to listen and I'm going to listen and listen and listen and work towards a resolve that will be compatible to help that individual which is also helping others. So parent engagement, parent involvement, everybody know it's a three tier and that's working with our teachers and staff because that's how I raised my kids. We was in a you know relationship. It's me, you, the, my son and the teachers, you know? So that's important. That's important. And, I, and you know, I think, you know, for so long there has been, like you said, there's a, a the tiers, the yes. parents, the teachers and the students. And for so long, there's been a disconnect there. And I believe with the recent, you know, uh, activities due to the COVID-19 yes. pandemic, we really as a nation had to really look at education yes. and look at those three tiers and really come to grips that we, we haven't quite mastered and bringing all of that together. And it's shown through, you know, having to, you know, take education online and right. for, you know remotely for a lot of these students right. for them to not have it like to because i'm telling you girl i i i laughed so hard this woman the other day she was like look here uh i know this my kid but i want to thank every teacher in america and everyone i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know you know, she was like, I want to thank every last part of wow. the system, the board, the, the principals, <laughs> the, teachers, the the custodians. I want to thank right. everyone because it's I true. have one child that I'm here at home with trying to navigate through this education system right. of them learning. And I can't imagine you have a classroom of 30 and they entering in and out throughout the right. day. 
So um, I this think is an that, infusion, like you said, we, yes. we needed to do this. And, and I've, I've talked to people and they've said, well, you know, we want to get back. We want to get back. And I said, first of all, get back. We're not going to go back where we came from. We're going to build and move forward. Distance education will always be with us, I believe. And I say that because it was the same thing with education, higher education. You wouldn't have been able to, many wouldn't have been able to move forward with higher education had there not been remote opportunities. We yeah. looked at it differently because we love brick and mortar. It's normal. I break off and I do that. And that's why even in our district, we are saying you're going to have those options. We're not trying to make people afraid. Oh my God, it's just going to change overnight. But, but I know that these students are going to value now I can move forward because I can navigate through this computer that's doing more than just being an entertainment piece for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing how much more is going to advance our students and the things that we have not been comfortable with. We're just going to, it's going to become the new way of doing things. We've learned before, you know, it's just that sometimes we get stuck. We're like, yeah, but yeah, we have some safety. difficulties with moving along with change absolutely you know absolutely. and it takes a little time and yeah. i believe that we are going through that period as a nation yeah um, together uh, uh to, you're right together and it's like what they say baptism by fire yeah we're in it and we and we have to be in it to win right. Right. And you brought up a really good point about the brick and mortar because, you know, there are a lot of, you know, there are some some programs and, and school systems that when this happened, it was no problem for them because they have uh, they've always had yeah. these Absolutely. systems in place. And it was like, OK, we're just going to roll. We're just going to roll. Right. Well, now we just have to expand it. Yes. You know, and so I think that, you know, it just shows with the level of leadership mm -hmm. with you and, and 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 being on the the school board. It just shows yeah, that your yeah. level of leadership, the innovation that's needed, right? Or right, right. you know, good leadership in terms of making sure that the students and the parents have the things that Absolutely. they need. Because there was no manual. I, I will not forget March 13th and everybody's looking at me and we talking and trying to figure it out. But still safety was always at the forefront and will remain at the forefront of my thinking. And then we take the necessary steps to see what we can do. But I was grateful. We were one of those uh, school districts that had closed the digital divide or began to work on closing it a long time ago, many years ago. So the Chromebooks were available to pass out, to have you know, then it became the engagement side, which again, I applaud the parents because we got them back on the front line trying to educate them along with their student. And so it's a navigating this new kind of, you know, process, but we are now hearing very positive things from people that are just like, okay, I get it. Okay, we can do this. And there's assurance. If you run into a problem, we hear, you know, we all are going to put all hands on deck to do whatever it takes to make this work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, initially people had the shock, but yes. I think some of them, you know, some folks have turned and said, "Wait a minute, this isn't too bad." Right. You know, this is this is this is not too bad. Right. So, uh, you know, it's good to find the the blessing in yeah. in, in every situation if you can, Absolutely. and it sounds Absolutely. like your district has been doing a great job yeah. at doing that. And so, you know, you brought up uh, about, you know, you know, matriculating to higher education. Yes. And I know one of your goals is to make sure that, you know, your students, you know, are meeting the, the, the requirements Absolutely. in order for them to be able to go to college or go mm -hmm. to university or just be career ready. I that's know that right. that's that's very important to you. Now, I there is a lot of conversation these days about um, college, you know, because of the debt that we're seeing across mm -hmm. the nation in terms of um, student loans. You know, mm -hmm. I have had enough student loans that I can buy a small village or an <laughs> island. Uh, and my children, you know, they have been blessed to be able to go to school and and not have to worry so much right. about, you know, the, the debt because 
that's just, you know, we, we wanted to make sure as parents that we were it able was to options, that. though. That's what you did. You created those yeah. options. I seen, I seen the shout out on your daughter and all them. I saw yeah. that. But here's the thing. That's why that engagement piece says there has been opportunity always there. Same thing for my kids. And I said, here's my model. My goal is to get them to high school, but to have a choice to college and career. And then you choose the school again based on what was the scholarship? What was the things you got? What did you produce so that you can choose? So, yes, I'm blessed. I had a son at UCLA, blessed to have one that graduated from Morehouse, blessed to have a daughter, you know, going to school in Florida. Miami. But again, it was because of choices. Limited your choices, then you have to limit. I'm also... You know, Valley College, Cal State, Cal Baptist, you know, stayed locally, but it was a little bit different. My parents was like, we want y'all all here. But I saw, hey, give them the options to earn where they want to go without all the debt and the crazy. You know, mm -hmm. it, it is starting early, but it takes navigating it. Otherwise, I love the fact that many of our, um, our community colleges are now free for two years. That's free. Did I say free? Free. Yeah. Years. Free. <laughs> Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. So you know you can't do it. No, it's and and, and, it's, it and I tell folks all the time because um, what I you know I understand the conversation about you know not everybody needs to go right. to college. Right. Yes, right. that's right. correct. Not right. everybody because there are, there are careers and there are jobs out there yes. that people have to do. We have to have people serve in those roles, you know, and uh, some of those, they don't require education. They don't require college, they, uh, you know, and, but some do require, there isn't a position out there. I don't care if you dumping fries at McDonald's. That's that true. requires a skill set. Everybody that's needs true. to have a skill, whether that's soft skills, whether that's, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just knowing how to, Get get up and go to work on time. Right. You do have to have skills. And I think that's important to not lose sight of, you know, I don't want us because I what I've seen over the years in our country, mm -hmm. we always do either or. Right. You, know, you can have you can yes. have it all or have it both. We, yes. There was a period of time where in the school system, all they did was focus on you. We had to, that's when we had the shop. We right. Had, right. Uh, all we of those have different auto yeah. we had all the vocations, yeah. you know, the vocational trainings. Mm -hmm. Then somebody said, No, 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 we need to focus on college. Right. And then they took all of those trainings out of the school, yeah. and then all they did was focus on college. Right. But then you had students on both ends of the spectrum right. who were left out. Yeah. Book smart, yeah. you know, but then it was like I don't know how to boil water. I don't know how to sew. You know, what what are you talking about? This is so I agree with you a thousand percent on that. And we even now, you know, what the fancy word is career technical education. So we have a ton of career pathways, which I support, you know, making get, exposing our students to different opportunities. Again, they may choose, like you said, when I first came on, it was a lot of saying college or career, just like you said. And and, and I struggle with that. I said, oh, I can't say that, you know, but if we doing both and, you know, then they can choose from that, but we're going to give them those opportunities. Oh, okay. I see. I do want to go this route. I want to, I want to be a mechanic or whatever, because there's good money in these things. If you're skilled to be able to do it, but you need to know your skill too. <laughs> exactly. You do. You and do. that's where mm -hmm. great counseling comes in. And that's there where you go on right. the school, in the school system. That's where all that, giving those students that counseling and guidance. Yes. And, you know, and I tell young folks all the time, look, Get you a skill set while you're still in high school, even right. if you're going to college. If your right. school offers a ro offers a robotics class or okay. a yes. auto, you know, technician yeah. course I or agree. nursing or something, because I that's what I did when I was in school. Yeah, and I said, you know, get that while you're in high school because one, it's yeah. not costing you anything right now. You nope. can get that education for free. You can get right. that education for free. And exactly. then the more, you're more marketable when you're out there trying to get your job, even when you finish college. Right. You go to college, get that skill set. And I said, then one, two, 
I mean, a side hustle ain't gonna kill anybody. No, it's not. And you need that. You know, you never know when you need to fall back on it. All these people was like, how am I gonna do my hair? What am I doing with my nails? It's like you need to have the ability to, like my dad said, hey, if you out there, you gotta change your tire. I'm just showing you. So you just not out in the wilderness looking crazy. Now I don't anticipate it, but if it does happen, you'll know how to do it. And exactly. I think that's important. And you, I'm glad you mentioned the counselors because that's another big, important, um, you know, part of education to me. That over the years I've seen it evolve differently. People hear counseling. Some people think it means okay, you're gonna put me on the couch and talk to me. And are they doing academics? A big load of you know students coming in and out. But that's another, you know, I think a, a part of the system that's kind of been unmet. And and I plan to provide more support to our counselors. So they can be able to do it in the 21st century as well. What are these students needing? Bringing them in and having exactly those conversations that you said. Let's talk to them about other things versus, okay, I'm, I just want to see your transcript. Okay, you, you, you good or you not good? Then what? You know, what's the option? So be doing that and making sure I'm supporting these wellness centers. I know you've heard a lot about that. Separating that verbiage of that type of mental health service provider that we can bring in to help you with your social and emotional, you know, struggles, issues, things that we normally don't want to talk about that hindering you from doing well, you know. In and, and I'm glad you said that because, um, you know, not every school system is um, is embracing and, right. and approaching it that way because right. they're still it's like the separation of yeah. okay we're the school district if we have a, a student that has a 504 or mm -hmm. IEP and they have you know emotional issues or i mean and sometimes it's it's a, a brief situation for students right. you know, they just right. need somebody to go and talk to and then and and and, and that's it and and they're good right. you know right. but there's always been that well uh Let's just send them over to the county. Let's make a right. record and get them over right. to the county or whomever they have an insurance provider with, if they have right. them. Yeah. You know, but then yeah. it's the disconnect. And so I'm so glad that you guys have taken yeah. um, uh, the step in the right direction because, you know, yeah. my background is mental health. You okay. know, my, my, my degrees are in clinical psychology. So yes. there's yes. always been that stigma of like, yeah. Okay, it's All right, you gonna start something for me. You know, and especially in the black community. Yeah, like, that point right there, it's a barrier. You know, we're gonna pray about it, which we love. We know we're supposed to pray about it. Mm -hmm. But then we have to take action, and sometimes that's talking to someone. Now I'm an advocate of talking with someone you're comfortable with. It may it may be who you look like. That's very important. So my day work is working with foster youth with mental health concerns you know but again advocating to say this stigma thing that we've put on it years and years has to stop and that's why wellness centers when i first came to the board i would you know i would use the word mental health and you know because that's the terms we use from the clinical side and everybody it was like taboo and not but we've come a long way now with wellness centers i'm so happy to be a part of the county seat because we have those providers right here willing to partner with us now because the conversation is right. We need you to come in as a support. We're going to be a bridge to our parents and our students. So and it's so important too because yes. you know we've we've heard the stories, you know, yes. and uh, and and unfortunately the tragedies of, you know, we see how we had some students who had, you know, suffered from mental illnesses, yes. suffered from, you know, yes. and they came and they brought mm -hmm. guns to school and, yes. and and students lost their lives because yes. those students were crying out for help and right. didn't find or have a place for right. them to mm -hmm. get the help that they need. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, even though it's, you know, you guys have the wellness, you know, uh, portion of it, that actually mm -hmm. also kind of filters into safety. You know, Absolutely. Safety. Absolutely. Because it, it, in the way it's done, it's teams that they now can differentiate. I'm going over here and I don't have to explain that I'm here because this I'm feeling some kind of way other than, well, you should be in class or 
What's your grades looking like? No, it comes that time to say, if you just need to be here. And we know as adults, sometimes we just need that. We've always talked about it. It gets me the things we know as adults, but we don't think it apply to this 21st century student. They just need to get it out sometimes. I don't like this teacher. And that is okay to say oh, that. We do that at work, you know. Right. <laughs> if, if Keisha come over here one more time. One more time. <laughs> If she come over here right. one more again, it's and going to be a problem. They yeah. want to do it too. They I want to stay face off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to teach them that it is okay because otherwise we deal and you know this from the clinical side then we deal with the ultimate the suicides and you know just just the fact that a young person would ever let alone anyone but a young person already given up like oh my god it's never going to get better somewhere we failed you know somewhere we just didn't do something to say it's okay you're challenged with whatever but we're going to get through it together it's just like we are now COVID is here all right we can't just throw up our hands and quit we have to get through it together and it's okay when you get stressed out like I am sick of this and sick of that so is somebody else but we gonna rise tomorrow and move forward so okay. yeah that is and okay. safety like you said it's all contingent upon safety because when we're not you know when we're not right you know we we we're not good for anybody so it's like we're subject to say or do anything, but when we're looking at our, our mental wellness and we're checking that in and saying, hey, it's okay, mental wellness day. I like when people tell me that. I'm taking a mental wellness day. I'm oh, like, I, 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 I take them all. The, oh, mental health day. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm taking it. This is for me. This is not, this is not a, y'all can say personal because that's how we was using it before. No, 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 no. No, this is mental health day because if I don't get my mental health together, it ain't going to be good. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, well, Tanya, you said you were taking a mental health day and I saw you at the mall. That, 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 that was my parents. That, that, that that's, that's my, my therapy. therapy. That's my therapy of choice. You take your therapy of choice, that's mine. <laughs> yes, my shopping therapy. What? Thank you. Thank you. I'm back another person, ain't I? I, I I'm coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so important. So, wow. so, so important. Yeah. And you may mention about working with foster kids. Yeah. And that's near and dear to me because yeah. those are the folks who tend to get lost in the shuffle. You are you so know, they, they tend to fall through the cracks and people forget that foster children become adults. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. As do the flip side of bullies. You know, they don't just appear. It's been an over a period of time and we have to look at groups and identify what is the need. Foster youth, I'm so, our district, we have had so many, you know, magnum cum laude's and everything. And I'm like, you are resilient beyond, you know, it can be done, but we also have to give them the, the the supports that they need. Someone was just talking to me yesterday about a foster youth during this time, calling about, you know, I'm sure you know about McKinney Bento. They were speaking to them about, you know, they're moving, but they want to remain still connected to their school. But again, when a person is not aware, it was like, oh no, you can't stay and mm -hmm. you can't do this, you can't do this. And I'm like, oh my God, you're disrupting that person right now. And do you know how that can set them off on a whole mm -hmm. other cycle mm -hmm. you know so we and that's that's important right now during COVID because we do know that those are the students again that I'm talking about we need to reconnect to make sure we're reaching out finding them wh wherever they are we know we have a, a team that works through our district that is the homeless you know um, support team and they're out there in the field wherever the motels the hotels where they are and I am so appreciative to that because they need our support especially now oh great that's some terrific efforts that's being made mm -hmm. by you know um your district because yes. not, like i said not every even some of the ones who have great budgets right and, and um and have been around for a long time just haven't even quite grasped that that's kind of the mm -hmm. route that they need to go and it sounds right. like you guys um are setting the standards and being a yeah. model a, a, right. a model district uh mm -hmm. to other districts and how how this can be done 
And, and you know what we do, Tanya? I think what's really good is since I've been on this board, one thing we always do when we begin to look at, you know, how people say data, data, but when we ask for it, it's not a presentation of this is it. Then we say, well, give us the demographics because you always have to look at it. Tell me who's black, who's white, you know, who's Latino, who's foster, you know, who who's homeless. You have to look at those different numbers. Now, we also know that some people fall in all those same numbers. And that's another picture that people miss. Our African-American students often is check mental, the, 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 yeah. our students that are special education, they in check, check, check. Yeah, yeah. But then I get frustrated often saying, then why are they failing the most? How are we not giving support in five categories? You have mm-hmm. the opportunity to get support and somehow we still miss it. So looking at data is one thing, but digging deep into it and saying, okay, that's how we know right now that are you know our foster youth we gotta get those numbers we're, we're our homeless students we have to identify those numbers otherwise we get caught up in the big percentage oh well 90 percent is there and i'm a big component as a board member people often say why do you always worry about the 10 percent because when someone says to me oh your graduation rate is 93 percent," i say yeah but what happened to the seven seven percent mm-hmm. you know we always got to be looking at who didn't make it and why didn't they make it? Because our job is education. So everybody is supposed to get education, which is why I don't, you know, I steer away from the achievement gap and whatnot. Now I, I call it more of there's an equity gap. And mm. we got to work with the equity gap. And yeah. then we'll see who's falling, who's down, who's below, so that you can raise everyone up. Oh, that's just that that right there, that hit. That hit like a B12 shot Mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. When you just said the equity gap, because yeah, we are not, we're not focusing on that. We're not as as a whole, as a whole, we're not, we're not looking at it that way. And that's a great perspective to take on when we're looking at our our young folks. What is the equity gap and what's keeping them from achieving those barriers and where they need, where Mm -hmm. they need to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's, that was, um, that was eye opening uh, yeah. right there. And that's how I just bring it all together. And as we look at everything, where are those inequities for that you have the same students, same age, same whatever, but this one is not making it. So something is missing. So we work on that versus, okay, the achievement gap, achievement gap. What does that say? You're saying that they can't do it. That's how you've determined it. That's not necessarily so. They need the resources and the tools. And then we want to see what the barrier is and often it's not it's just i needed this <laughs> you know I, I needed that in order to be able to achieve what i needed to achieve so mm-hmm. well that is great and i'm so glad that you uh you answered that call <laughs> and you said you know because often people people don't even realize about the whole appointment process. Right. Like, oh, you you got to go and do this and you run and you get, there are so many different things that people can do in yeah. politics where mm-hmm. you, you know, you can be appointed on the different boards and commissions right. and all types right. of things and, and continue to serve your community if that's Absolutely. what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that you, you know, you took the courage to step out there and step out there on faith Right. And, 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 you know, go out there and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get appointed onto this. And then you went in there and you got it. Yeah. And and you're continuing to serve. You know, they say that it takes a woman five times, you know, at least five times to be asked to run before she would even consider it. Not that she would even run, but for her to even consider it. And they said it takes like nine to 10 times for a black woman for her to even be like, what we'll say you, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, okay, what extra drama am I getting myself yeah. into, and why? And, and then with men, you don't even have to ask them. Yeah, thank you. Them. We don't want them. Some of them, we don't, it's like we. Who told you to run? Right. You know? And they don't even have to be asked, and they get out there and they right. just make it. And we really have to change that. We do. And we I think do. it's important when people see women like you, and especially black women like you yes who are yeah. out there in these positions and doing it well right and doing right. it well and and really rising to the occasion so with that being said 
if you could, you know, because there's so many, I, I run across so many women, young women, even right. you know, even seasoned women. Yeah. Yeah. Who, you know, said, you know, I want to be in this political game. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to be in politics in some kind of way. What yeah. was the one piece of advice that okay. you can give to these women and, and in particular black women? What would be that piece of advice that you would give them that you have, you know, from something that you've learned in your serving? Right. The question is answered this way. What are you passionate about? And and I and I know we loosely we've we've used passion so much. It's ministry to me. So let me call it what it is. What is it that you're doing that it's when people see you and you see yourself, you say, that's what I do. Cause I live kind of like that. When people talk about the various things we talked about today, I say, oh, that's what I do. And you got to know what it is that you do. And then once you do that, you don't do everything. You start getting on commissions. You start Ooh, getting yeah. awards. That's doing that thing. Not because some people get caught up because true. After I got appointed, then elected, you know, it was like be on this, be on that. And then it was like, whoa, I told people early on, I said, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go. I'm going to skip over just being on boards and be an advisor. Because you can you can board yourself to death. Yes, you can. Things. And then I told people it has to line up. Is it education? You know, I love, you know, municipalities, all that, but it's really not my thing. I remain as a community, a, a citizen at that point in time. But education, oh, if it lines up, absolutely. I'm going to apply. I'm going to get on, see if I can be a member of that board. But just don't get on everything if it doesn't align. Once you see what you do, when people look at you and say, that's what she do, because people say she family engaged, but don't bother her then that's what you do. You should be on a family engagement board. You should be on a parent advisory board. You know, you should be on a wellness team, a board that connects parents to those groups. And then it evolves and it makes sense because you don't have to guess when people are talking to you, what you're going to talk about. Just stay in your lane. This is what I do. Everything else I can assist, support, but this is what I do. And that's what I encourage women to do. Because when you do everything, you already know. I am so glad that you said that because you cannot be everything to everyone. And no. oftentimes as black women, as sister friends, we fall into that trap Yes, because can. we play so many different roles. We serve in so many different ways that we fall into that trap. And that's where that mental health and the burnout and then all the other wellness issues come up, high blood pressure, yes. all of that. You all know, um, those when all those things come into play, yeah. and so I'm so glad you said that. Stay, y'all, you hear that, ladies? Stay in your lane, you stay in your lane, right? Stop looking right. in the mirror, you veering yeah. over in my oh, lane, stay you, in your exactly. lane, stay in that one lane, know where you're going, and you good. Otherwise, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna clean this room a little bit of half of cleaning this room, yeah. ain't nothing gonna get done. So that's yeah. my advice. And I always tell people, and it works because when you're doing too much, like you said, you're not effective. But when it comes to the educational side, I'm like, yep, that's what I do. That's yeah. what I do. I'm like, keep up with your own doggone self. Keep <laughs> the Kardashians alone. We can't right. keep up with the Kardashians. That's why they go off the air now anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Write your own story, okay? Please, please, you, you, you are the author, okay? We <laughs> have your own narrative, your own that that belongs to you. And I'm so glad that you said that because that's where I see people yeah. make the biggest mistake right. is they want to have their hands and everything. And it's like God didn't give that to you. No, God gave you. He said. Yeah. This right here is for you, and you all right. over here doing this, right. and you all over here doing that, and it's like, yeah. no, 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 I need you right here. And then you wondering like, why am I missing out on my opportunity? Because you are not focused on what you are supposed to be doing. And you God will just be like, I'm gonna let you do that. You know, mm -hmm. go ahead and do that. You'll be back. I don't yeah. know when, but you'll be back. And yep. you'll be spinning all over the place. And, and that's the worst thing. When I see my sisters just put, you know, it's just like church. I always model the women in church. I'm like, sit down somewhere. Don't you want somebody to escort you to your seat? Mm -hmm. That ain't you when you running all over the place. And that's why when you pull up to the gas station and you'll be putting it in yourself. Yeah. Just relax in your role and everything will work out. But sometimes we, and we can, that's the beautiful thing about us. We can do it all. 
But we yes. wasn't made to do it all all the time. Yeah. That's we, the thing. <laughs> exactly. And you know, uh, you know, I used to praise the thought when people talk about black women and being super women and superheroes yeah. and all that. But then I was like, that's killing us. It, it absolutely is. Um, Killing us because we should not be everything to everyone. Now, collectively, we can That's come right. together and right. you you good with your parent engagement. Right. This one over it's here right. is good with right. something else, and this one, and we collectively come together and we a bad team and can't nobody do it. We're forced to be together. together. That's so true. That's so true. Yeah. And I, that's how I've always trained people. I said, I will never do what you do because I don't, I'm not trying to get on. Oh, let me perfect what you're doing. It's like singing a solo in church. You know, everybody sit there and go, you know, but I would have, I would have sung that a little bit higher, a little bit lower. And it's always that Monday morning quarterback. Let people do what they do and add to, like you said, just don't try to duplicate what I do. You spin in your wheels. You weren't gifted to do that. It's okay. And nor was I gifted to do what you do. And it's all right. It's okay. Exactly. Well, Gwen, it has been such <laughs> an honor to have you here. And girl, when I tell you, <laughs> I was like, she you was all me. overdue from that one conversation. I was I like, no, for five years, and we I have been like, in our face. I'll be sitting up. Now, you know, you know, social media stalker. I am a social media stalker. I was. Talk of somebody in a minute on social media be all in their business, you know. And I be look at her over there, she over there doing that. Look at she on the stage over there. Oh, I see over there speaking. Oh, look, she over there. She got a uh event going on over there. I said, look at her moving and shaking all up over in this town. And girl, I was so caught up. Then had the nerves become the 2019 woman of the year for the yeah. first the district. I was like, yes, okay. <laughs> yes, and I said, look at over there doing. I'll be all up and be all in your stuff and stuff. Me, look, look. <laughs> it but I'm so good to be here. I am so proud of you, and like I Thank said, I'm so you. glad you answered the call. And you, you know, like as my grandma always say, speak it to existing. We already yeah. spoke you into your seat for yeah. another term. So yeah. those of you who are in, you know, are you guys in districts? No, actually, we're at so large. Okay, yes. so we're in the San Bernardino Unified School District area. Gwen, I'm telling you, you you got, you're going to win with Gwen, okay? <laughs> you are going to win with Gwen. Don't play. <laughs> and how can people be a part because I know things are a little different yes, now that you know because of the COVID nineteen pandemic and how you typically campaign and do all right. these things are different now. But if someone yeah. wants to, to be a part of your campaign, help your campaign, just you know, reach out and give you some love because people don't know when you out there yeah. running for office, you need all the love that you can get. Yeah, if you somebody want to give you a love offering, if somebody right. wants to give you a Piece of some, or a, a, a small piece, a big piece, because I'm pretty sure Gwen taking all the pieces. I'm taking it all. They raised our fees, and so I'm like, okay, I need some love donations. But you definitely, you know, I'm I've, I've kept up. I have my campaign social media as well, Facebook. Where's Gwen Dowdy Rogers with my links and everything is there, or you can reach out to Gwen for SBC is the number, and donation links are available to donate. I, whatever it doesn't matter nothing is too small and then also as you reach out to me on my campaign you know we're going to have to do things virtually like i'm doing right now but calling you know having individuals that are willing to make some calls you know to let people that they let them know you win with gwen <laughs> i need you all to do that so don't hesitate to reach out to me go to my social media pages inbox me gwen rogers is my personal one and gwen daddy rogers is the one is for my campaign but um please send your love because i need it and your prayers as always but i appreciate yeah. the support today i do and, and vote and okay. vote don't now, be out now. there now. I, let, let me tell you something. Woo. These folks out here who talking all this stuff and yeah. all this complaining and Say talking it. about I don't like this, I don't want this, this and that. Then when you say, "Hey, did you go vote?" I'm not even registered. Yes, Shut so no. Your, no, it's no, 
lips. As my yes. as my teacher used to always go, shut your lips. <laughs> okay. Because this is not a time that no. we can play around. It is no. too important. No. And we can't just focus on our presidential election. No. We have Never. to vote down. All yes. the way down. We have to mm-hmm. vote all the way down. I don't care yes. if you talk about water board. Y'all need to be You're voting. Right for all of these judges whatever the case is yes. because people the number one thing i always got uh when i was in politics was people oh i, I just i don't know who if one they didn't even know who 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 any of the council people were who the school board members were or no, anything like that but all of the complaints they had Mm-mm. were about the people or the things that was happening on that level now they will talk about oh yeah i vote for president and that's it no, you got, the, the local level is where you see the change immediately. So exactly. you got to turn, and you're right. You can't complain if you don't vote. Just don't even talk. Just don't matter of fact, don't even say nothing at yes. all. But you have to, your voice is when you go and vote and say, you know, I have people <laughs> tell me there's times when they told somebody told them, yeah, I'm going to vote for you. And the election was over. And it was like, really? Let's be informed, people. Let's stay up to date and know. Let's not. Let's please don't. <laughs> please register. Yes. And vote. Yes. Register and vote. Th- those are the two things that you have to do. Is yeah. register and vote. Yeah. It's so important. Well, Gwen, it has been an absolute pleasure, my sister Thank friend. You. And Thank again, give give uh, give all our folks your information again on where yes. they reach you. Yes, so you can reach me at 951-203-0744 or you can go on my Facebook page, Gwen Dowdy Rogers or Gwen Rogers inbox me. Links are there, posts are there and and bring it on. I whatever you can, you willing to do, I need your support, I need your help. You want to make some phone calls, you know, just just Send me a shout out, send me a smoke signal, whatever, and I'll get the information to you. And most importantly, as we said, I need you to vote. Gwen Dowdy Rogers, win with Gwen. That's right, win with Gwen. All right. And all you ladies who are out there talking about you want to run for public office, you are interested, especially our sister friends. This is a great way. And especially now everything is virtual. You don't even have to live in Gwen's area. You can be across the nation and still help Gwen with her campaign. And one of them, I'm telling you, before I got into office, I volunteered on campaigns. I That's worked right. campaigns. Yes. I, I walked and knocked on doors, yes. made calls, put up signs, whatever. Worked on campaigns before I ended up running my own. Yes. So it's yes. so important that she's going to need volunteers too. She yes. can use your money, she can right. use your votes, and she can yes. also use you guys, you know, hard earned yes. work. And helping yeah. her get back into office. Absolutely. So she put her information out there. Sister friends, y'all reach out. Let's give Gwen some love. And like I said, I'm already speaking into existence that that, that is that is a done deal, but she still needs your support and your help. I do. I do. And I appreciate it so much. I appreciate all the support. And y'all know I'm out there working hard. Just let me know what do we need to do to win with Gwen. <laughs> All right, that sounds like that. That's 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 a money. That's a money statement right there. Win with Gwen. That's All right. right. That's right. All the way to the polls. All the way to the polls. Well, thank you, Gwen. It has thank been you. a pleasure, and thank you are you. always welcome because you 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 know you have a seat at the table. Yeah. And you are, you are an honorary and forever sister friend of the show. So you are welcome at any time. And we would love for you to come back, especially after you win. And we can have a, we can celebrate and have a party. Yes, right here. absolutely. I'm no longer on the menu. I'm at the table. <laughs> yes, girl, you at the table. <laughs> and you ain't brought no folding chair either. No, it's, I'm finished. I pulled up. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I heard that. Well, thank you again. Thank and everyone, you. thank you for joining us for another great episode 
of We Own the Table and Sister Friends. Continue to tune in. And like I said, keep looking at Gwen because Gwen is doing big things. Gwen was is doing big things, and we're going to win with Gwen. Yes. You guys take care. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs>